Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Pope Metallicus, and welcome to the first episode of Rock and Roll Religion, where we talk about some of my favorite albums, some of your favorite albums maybe too, and I'll tell you what I think and whether or not I think you should get it. And if it's something that we really think we, we sh uh, that I really think people should listen to. So for the first episode, I figured we start off strong with this album right here, Bad Magic by Motorhead. This album is the last album by the band, unfortunately, with the passing of Lemmy Kilmister in 2016. And I can't think of a better way to start our channel off than by paying tribute to these absolute legends. So without further ado, let's get into it. We're going to go track by track, and I'm going to tell you what makes this thing tick. So, first off, Victory or Die. They start off strong, with a fast-paced, aggressive, just in-your-face anthem about it, with a never-say-die attitude, which is a hallmark of the Motorhead sound. And <clears throat> to put it right at the beginning, just sets you right in the mood for the whole album. Second up, Thunder and Lightning. Very high tempo, very bombastic, very... Uh, loud in your face track again with a really really good solo from phil campbell on the guitar and something that i th think you're you're really going to enjoy third uh, third song which is firestorm hotel they slow down a little bit but they still have that hard rock tone with a lot of bluesy undertone to it that i find really interesting and it's something that motorhead does very very well and something I think you are really, really going to notice. The fourth starts off, which is uh, Shoot Out All Your Lights. Start, uh, starts off with a really, really good drum intro by Mickey D, which is standard fare for him. The man's a genius. And it's fast-paced. It's a very thrashy song. Uh, fans of Metallica, you are going to notice a lot of that sound in here because that's where it came from initially. Early Metallica was very heavily influenced by Motorhead, and I think you're going to hear a lot of that in this tune. Fifth one, The Devil. There's a lot to love here. It's a slower track, but it's very heavy. With that um, really deep blues riff, very similar to like 70s Black Sabbath. I really, really dig it. I, solid work by the, them on this one. Number six, electricity is pretty much exactly what it says on the box. It's just fist pumping, f straight ahead, outright rock and roll, and I could not love it anymore. Seven, it, we have Evil Eye, which is, you got another really, really interesting uh, drum intro by Mickey D. Really solid, and then it's just fast and loud like it should be. That's really just how this band does business. And then number eight, we have Teach Them How to Bleed. It's pretty similar to the first few tracks where it's just that fast, loud, double bass, just uh, loud and out of control uh, rock and speed metal tune that I really, really think everyone should listen to. And then number nine, we have Till the End, which is a very slow, kind of more mournful song. Um, very blues heavy. That... Um, it's mostly pretty subdued, but builds to a really nice crescendo in the um, chorus, which I really, really dig. And I think that's going to be a really, really standout song for this album. Number 10 is Tell Me Who to Kill, which, you know, it's a sol just a solid headbanger, just a epitome of a motorhead track where it's fast it's loud it's not too long it's just in and out do what you got to do and you move on to the next one number 11 is choking on your screams we have a mid-tempo song with a bone crusher of a riff that's just really really sick and the vocals are a kind of more of a lower growl which fans of lemmy will know he does very very well and I think, like, you you know, again, the thrash guys, I think there's a lot to, for you guys to like here. Um, number 12 is When the Sky Comes Looking for You, which is, you know, it's rock and roll the motorhead way. Fast, loud, and out of control. 
And I think, on a lyrical side anyway, or at least from this point, I think this was Lemmy's goodbye to his fans because I think he knew he wasn't terribly well towards the end here. We're talking this album came out at the end of 2015. So I think he knew that he didn't have long, and this was his way of saying goodbye to the fans who put him where he was and been banging our heads to him for 40 years. So, you know, it's a very solid track. I really dig it. And then it fades into the last track, which is Sympathy for the Devil. And I'm not going to tell you anything about Sympathy for the Devil. You don't already know. It's pretty much just the Rolling Stones tune covered by Motorhead. And they do it justice. They really do. And I think they, in terms of the musicianship, I actually prefer this version uh, of it a little better in some ways. Um, the guitar work especially, I think. They punched it up and uh, made it a little heavier, and I really, really like how it turned out. And that closes out the album. So what do I think about the album as a whole? I think it is a fantastic uh, way of encompassing a 40-year music career in one record in that they do pretty much everything Motorhead does well on this record, and they did it in a very precise manner. Um, the musicianship, uh, Phil Campbell is not the most brilliant guitarist I've ever heard, but he is straight ahead blue, uh, blues rock guitarist that you know really knows how to make it heavy and he does a brilliant job here. He's not the world's most technical guitarist, but that's perfect for Motorhead because they're not the world's most technical band. Um, Mickey D on drums is, again, he's a virtuoso. He's just brilliant with how he plays. Um, fans of King Diamond, he was, he was responsible for the drum line behind uh, a lot of King Diamond's early stuff. So I think you'll, you know, you guys will know him from there. And uh, then... Lemmy on bass and vocals. What do you even say about a talent like Lem? Um, the man basically is rock and roll to his very core. And he was the core of rock and roll for a lot of years. He, epitom he epitomized what being a rock star was and what the rock life was, was it meant to be. And um, on bass, he's always brilliant with that heavy really thunderous bass sound um and on vocals you that's unfortunately where i have one of the only negative things to say about this album is that you can tell fans of the band can tell his voice was straining a little bit and it sounded a little weak at times so you know that's why i think i don't think he knew well, i think he knew he wasn't terribly well and wasn't really at 100%, which is unfortunate. Um, but overall, I would give Bad Magic probably an 8.5 out of 10. I really dig this album. I really think you will too. And for a final outing by a fucking legendary band, I think you guys are really, really going to like it, and I think you should own it. And the CD itself uh, is pretty cool too. I have it right here. Got all sorts of little, it's like a little booklet where you have all of the songs with the lyrics in them and all that and little drawings and stuff like that in it. You know, back down to all the data on the song, like, you know, who was on every track and stuff like that. So it's a pretty good package and um, I really, really think you're going to like it. So that does it for this episode. Um, if you... If there's any bands you want to see me cover, or albums in particular you want to see me cover uh, in the future, leave them in the comments. Um, if you have any suggestions for me, leave them in the comments, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next one. Stay heavy, stay safe, stay healthy. I love you all. I'll see you next time.